Hello, my name is Anna and I am a part of Team 13562 from Columbus North High School. As concerns about the sustainability and environmental impact of traditional trucking grow, electric trucks increasingly represent the future of the trucking industry. Even Cummins, a company headquartered in our hometown of Columbus, Indiana, primarily focused on diesel engine manufacturing, is starting to develop more electrical technologies to keep up with this growing trend. However, given the enormous scale of infrastructure required to make this change, it is important to understand the pace and requirements of electrification. For part one, we address the pace of change from diesel to electric semis by predicting what percent of the fleet would turn electric in a set number of years. For part two, to address the needed infrastructure, such as charging stations, we are asked to create a model that estimates the number of chargers and charging stations needed along a route to keep up with the traffic levels. Realistically speaking, not all communities have the same environmental motivation or financial incentive. So for part three, we created a method of prioritizing electrification along different trucking routes. Ultimately, all three parts combined help answer the question of how realistic and how prevalent electric trucks will be in the future. Next, Sammy will talk about our model for part one. Thanks, Anna. In part one, we were asked to predict how many electric semi trucks will be on the road in 5, 10, and 20 years. To tackle this problem, we applied extrapolated data to create a model for the demand of electric trucks, further relating this to the amount of electric trucks on the road through a differential equation. In order to find the difference in the cost of diesel and electric semi trucks, we first had to model the costs for each type of truck. For simplification purposes, we only modeled the cost of purchasing a truck and the cost of fuel. We assumed all other variables would be similar between electric and diesel semi trucks. This is a reasonable assumption because most other costs would differ based on location and type of route, not type of truck. However, there could still be some error. We extrapolated the data using an exponential curve because inflation and technological advances often act exponentially. We then combined our two curves to create an equation for the total cost of diesel trucks. Similar to the diesel trucks, the cost of electric trucks was modeled based on the upfront cost and the cost of energy. We modeled them exponentially, but since the technological advances are growing faster than inflation, the upfront cost of electric trucks is a decreasing model with a horizontal asymptote, which gave us the form of our equation, beginning with a constant followed by the upfront cost component and ending with the component for energy. One weakness of using extrapolated data is that trends can change over time, making the data not entirely accurate. Next, Vivek will continue with the explanation of our model. Thanks, Sammy. So now that we have the extrapolated costs for diesel and electric trucks, the next step is to create a logistic model of demand, which takes in this cost difference and outputs a replacement proportion, which is the proportion of newly bought trucks that are predicted to be electric. The two major factors here are difference in cost represented by delta C and bias represented by the parameter B. The motivation for using a logistic curve for this model is that at extreme values of delta C, we would expect nearly 100% of companies to use the cheaper option. However, at intermediate values of cost difference, we would expect a smooth transition between nearly all electric and nearly all diesel. And the logistic curve gives us exactly this kind of a shape. And furthermore, the tunable parameters B and A have clear interpretations as a bias parameter towards electric or diesel trucks and a spread parameter on the sharpness of the logistic distribution. So next, now that we have this logistic model of demand, we created a differential equation which will tell us the rate of electrification. And this rate is given by two components. The first term in our equation represents the rate at which electric trucks enter the market and is determined by the proportion of newly bought trucks which are electric, derived in the previous section. The second term represents the rate at which these trucks go out of service and leave the active fleet. Once we apply this differential equation, we can find both exact and numerical solutions to get time series data for the future proportion of electric trucks. The exact solution uses an integrating factor to solve this linear differential equation. 
and it yields an integral in the numerator, which is not necessarily computable by hand. For this reason, we used a fourth order Runge-Kuda method to provide high precision time series data, which we used for our results. Next, Erica is going to present the results of this model. Thank you, Vivek. Here is a model of the proportion of semis that will be electric in future years, based on our extrapolations, logistic model, and differential equations. And it shows that the proportion will increase over time, favoring electrification. As for our results, we found that in five years, 32.7% of semi-trucks on the road will be electric. And in 10 years, 55.6% will be electric. In 20 years, that would be 80.7%. Our model also predicts that over half of semi-trucks on the road will be electric by 2029 and over three quarters will be electric by 2037. A strength of our model is that it is based on market forces and trends in cost, which allows it to predict future buying decisions, even though electric trucks do not currently have a significant market share. This graph shows the baseline in blue and two other lines. The red one is shifted with a $10,000 bias toward electric trucks, which represents companies that value the environment. The yellow line, which gave a less steep curve on the logistic model, represents a larger spread in companies' decisions. Because these three lines are so close together, we determined that our model is not very sensitive to changes in variables, which shows that even when the incentives change, future trends favor electrification. And now here's the VEC with part two. Thanks, Erica. So now that we know the economic incentives and rate of electrification, the next part asks us to determine what amount of infrastructure will be required to support current trucking levels. So our basic approach for this part is based on balance of energy. The idea that a truck's daily energy usage must be equal to its average daily energy consumption. And this principle is sufficient to derive the total number of chargers needed on any route. So first, looking at daily energy intake, we assume that trucks charge up overnight from 20% to 100% and charge as needed during the day. And these are reasonable assumptions because the recommended range for the truck batteries is 20 to 80%. However, during the night, since there's unlimited time to charge, it makes sense to charge it all the way up to 100%. So given these two things, the daily energy intake is 80% of the battery capacity plus the time spent charging during the day multiplied by the charging rate. Similarly, we can quantify daily energy usage based on E of V, which is the energy consumption of one truck as a function of its velocity in kilowatt hours per minute. And given this, the daily energy usage is simply the time spent driving multiplied by the value of E of V for the average highway speed of a truck. And these two things are of course equal because the intake has to be equal to the usage. Next, we can look at chargers needed by expressing truck minutes spent charging on a route in two ways. The first way is to multiply the number of trucks on a route every day by the time each truck spends charging. The second way is to multiply the total number of chargers by the amount of time each charger is in service during the day. And so equating these two things gives the first equation on this screen. Then combining this with the results of the previous two slides, we get the equation at the bottom of the screen, which on the right side allows you to compute a number which will give you the total number of chargers required. And so given this, here are our results for each of the trucking corridors. Um, and so on this, we took the T daily values from the data provided um, by M3 about the long haul trucks per day on each route. Then we divided the length of each route by the average spacing between truck stops to determine the number of stations on each trucking corridor. And then finally, we use the equation from the previous slide to calculate the chargers needed. Um, and for a sensitivity analysis on this, what we would do is to vary the energy efficiency and charging rate of the trucks to see how future technological developments would affect our model. And furthermore, in a real implementation, we would add a factor of safety and round up to the nearest integer on chargers per station and number of stations. So next, Erica is going to tell us about the part three approach. Thank you, Vivek. Part three tasked us with ranking trucking corridors in order of development, so the route that was ranked first should start transitioning to electric trucking first. 
We base prioritization on the overall motivation of states surrounding the corridors to invest in this environmentally friendly project and the financial aspect of installing and operating this new method of transportation. Here is the basic model we developed. After finding the motivation rating, we ranked them from least to greatest, so the least motivation rating value received the first rank. For the financial rankings, the greatest financial return value was ranked first and so on. We then chose values to weight the motivation in financial rankings for the final quarter rating. The final ranks for each route to be developed were ordered with the quarter ratings from least to greatest value. Next, Helen will go into detail of how we calculated the state motivation in financial returns. Thank you, Erica. So to calculate the environmental or state motivation, we ranked U.S. states using data which included factors like green buildings per capita and electronic waste programs. In our model, a lower rank corresponds to a state that cares more about the environment. So using the information provided by M3 about each route, we then calculated each state's environmental rank based on the proportion of the route in that state. So we then modeled the financial motivation, which we did using the expected financial return or profit minus installation. The installation is simply the number of chargers multiplied by 52,000 because that is the average price of a DCFC charger. So we then calculated the operational profit, assuming the company aimed to make the same profit off an electric truck as they do a diesel truck. So we multiplied this by the number of electric trucks that visited the fueling stations along the route using the percent electric from part one and the number of trucks and length of the route provided by M3. The 365 represents that a fueling station is open year round and the 200 is the distance an electric truck can travel between charges. Based on this, we came up with our state motivation and our financial motivation ranks. Shown on the screen are the rankings for the state motivation and financial returns for the five example corridors we were tasked with ranking. Then using our basic model to weight the state and financial rank, we came up with an overall rank. We chose to weight the environmental slash state motivation at 0.1 and the financial motivation at 0.9 because generally a financial return is favored and prioritized in making a decision. Although we intend for the parameter to be changed by the user to accurately represent their concerns. And then additional attributes that we could have considered in order to strengthen our model could have included terrain, energy usage, traffic, et cetera. And here's Anna with our overall conclusions. Thanks, Helen. So to answer the question initially presented of how realistic and how prevalent electric trucks will be in the future, our models indicate that while infrastructure is a limiting factor, economic incentives favor rapid electrification. With proper infrastructure in place, we predict that the majority of trucks will be electric by 2029. Electrification may be the next step America needs to become more sustainable, which then raises the question, how exactly will this infrastructure be implemented? Sounds like a great problem for next year's M3 challenge. Thank you.